Oh, hey guys. You ever see a car so interesting that you can't help but stare? And then, when you're done staring, you can't help but hope that even if you're not going to own the car, that it's as fun to drive as it is to look at. Well, that's where I'm at with the all new 2019 Toyota Corolla hatchback. So I think it looks great, but is the new Corolla hatchback all show and no go? Well, time to put the driving gloves on and find out. Take the 2019 Toyota Corolla hatchback for a drive. I should probably back up, you might be a little bit confused. Yes, this is a 2019 Toyota Corolla hatchback. It's brand new for 2019. Uh, it replaces the outgoing Corolla IM, formerly the Scion IM hatchback. Uh, it rolls on a brand new architecture, the new Toyota, Toyota new global architecture TNGA compact chassis. It also is packing a brand new engine from the Toyota's Dynamic Force family of engines it's called the M20A. It's a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine that produces 168 horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque. As you might have noticed, that engine can be paired with a six-speed manual transmission as standard or an optional CVT automatic transmission. So yes, car enthusiasts rejoice. You can now have the practicality and reliability of Toyota Corolla with the fun looks of this hatchback and the six-speed stick. This Corolla hatchback is the Top Dog XSE trim. And with the manual transmission, costs about $24,000. If you get a fully loaded Corolla hatchback with the CVT automatic, the upgraded Toyota Entune display here with the navigation system and the adaptive headlights, a fully loaded car rings in at right around 27 grand. Though, why would you want a CVT when you can have a six speed? Now Toyota seems to know that it has a long way to go in terms of bolstering uh, the brand cachet around Corolla. When I mentioned that I was going to be having the new Corolla hatchback, no one seemed to understand why I was so excited until I showed them pictures of it. Uh, obviously, it's really cool to look at on the outside. Uh, it kind of picks up where the Corolla IM left off and just turns it up about 20% more, it seems like. It also helps that this bronze oxide color is one of my favorite new car colors I've ever seen before. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's this beautiful brown metallic uh, during the day and it has a great color shift into a jade green metallic, especially at night. It's gorgeous in person. So on the outside, it looks cool. It's modestly priced and it has that going for it. But is it fun to drive? Because that's really been the problem with the Corolla uh, in this market. It's always been the dull, sensible choice. It's never really been the fun option. Especially when you compare it to things like the Mazda 3 and the Honda Civic, which are really fun, good, engaging driving cars. So let's talk about the engine for a little bit. As I mentioned before, this is a brand new engine called M20A. Uh, naturally aspirated, direct fuel injection and port fuel injection, Toyota D4S, I think they call it. Uh, it's rated at 168 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque. Uh, red line is 6,800 RPM, and it feels like it could take more. Uh, the interesting thing is for a naturally aspirated low displacement four cylinder, it has a really nice flat torque curve. Uh, this engine does a really good job of picking up pretty much right off idle. There's no real flat spots in the power band and it kind of generally feels around town way more gutsy than the specs and figures would have you believe. So this engine, in addition to being relatively peppy, is also pretty fuel efficient as you might expect with a brand new engine with direct fuel injection. 
the EPA raised the new Corolla Hatchback XSE with a manual transmission at 30 miles per gallon in the city and 38 miles per gallon on the freeway. Although in the real world, I've come close to about 40 miles to the gallon on longer road trips. Okay, so we need to talk about the transmission. Everyone has been asking me about the six-speed transmission. It is mostly good news here. I have a few complaints and they're worth listening to, but overall, this shifter is lifted basically directly from the GC86. It looks exactly the same. Obviously, it's cable operated versus direct shift, but it looks the same, which is cool. It looks pretty sporty. The gear spacing is very nice and very even. The gearing itself is definitely driven by fuel economy. Uh, first gear goes to 37, six, or second gear goes to 62, third gear goes to like 92, fourth goes to like a billion. Um, the trade-off is, obviously when you're cruising down a freeway in sixth gear, you're turning pretty low RPMs. It's at like 24, 2500 RPM by 65 miles an hour. So it's a pretty relaxed cruiser, but obviously the trade-off is, Obviously, um, despite the engine having a pretty good mid-range, if you're not really in the power band and you're in the wrong gear, it, it's lacking a little bit of pickup. So to that end, I'd like to see the gear ratios changed around a little bit. I wish second, third, and fourth gears were about five to 10% quicker, just because it would liven the car up a little bit, and I think it would have a negligible effect on the real world fuel economy. That said, the acceleration is pretty brisk. Uh, this Corolla hatch with the manual transmission weighs in right around 3,000 pounds, and 0 to 60 happens in about 7.5 seconds. All right, so we're going 10 miles an hour. I'm just going to roll into it in first. See, it picks up pretty nice. Okay, so we need to keep talking about the transmission because the story does not end there. This clutch pedal, like the clutch pedal in most modern economy cars, is basically a marshmallow. It has no feel whatsoever. And that's kind of a bummer, because I wish it had some sort of feedback or communication. If they can do it with the GT86 sports car, why can't they do it here? Uh, to that end, another thing it seems to share with the GT86 is the very unusual clutch take-up point. Um, it, it does seem to be the case with all these new Toyota manuals that the clutch is a very non-linear action about it. And what I mean is basically, when you're lifting off the clutch, the bottom half of the pedal does nothing, and the top half does everything, and it kind of comes in a big lump. Uh, this makes it kind of tricky to drive at low speeds and in traffic, and I've stalled this car way too many times for someone who daily, who's been daily driving manual transmission cars for over a decade now. It seems like both the weight of the clutch and the motion could be changed via the hydraulics. If you change the clutch master cylinder and the clutch slave cylinder from a little bit more sporting, it would probably improve both of those things. So the clutch is a bit funny, but it has pretty evenly spaced gears and a six-speed transmission, and the shifter itself is excellent. Pretty positive for an economy car. Uh, the throws are a touch long, but that's quite okay because it has a pretty good uh, feedback to the driver. Okay, so you just heard me downshift from fourth to third right there, and I did that myself. Obviously, you get the manual transmission to shift gears yourself. That said, Toyota has introduced this technology called IMT, Intelligent Manual Transmission. It's a button down here in the console that you can press, and it will help assist your rev matching on the downshifts. So I'm in third right now, and I have IMT on. So all I'm gonna do is clutch in, slot the shifter to second, and it's gonna build the revs up for me. Ready, set. That's pretty good. I didn't do anything. All I did was downshift the shifter and the car built the revs up for me. By default, IMT is off, which is nice, but it's a cool thing to have if you're not a very good rev matcher or if you're new to the manual transmission. Okay, so I do have one last thing to mention about the engine and the transmission that I promise I'm done and we can go back to talking about how much fun this thing is to drive in the canyons. Uh, but it is related to that. So I'm glad Toyota includes their IMT technology just because this engine is not super duper revvy. Uh, what I mean by that is if you put the car in neutral and floor the accelerator, the engine doesn't rev up super fast and neither do the revs fall particularly fast. Now in a lot of new economy cars they have what's called rev hang where you put the clutch in to change gears and the revs just linger there. 
And that's annoying. That's an electronic calibration done by the manufacturer to improve emissions. Thankfully, this car doesn't really seem to have much in the way of rev hang. Uh, the revs in general just seem a bit slow. Uh, usually, if it's a mechanical thing, it's usually a result of having a very heavy flywheel. Now, having a nice heavy flywheel bolted onto the engine makes things nice and smooth, but obviously, that extra rotating mass makes the engine a little bit less responsive when it's revving up and down. I think it would have knocked a few pounds off the, off the weight of the flywheel, just like two or three. You know, I'm not asking it for it to be a rate, I'm not asking for a race engine here, but if it was a little bit more responsive, that would be great. So all that Canyon Road driving stuff is fun and good. But this is a Toyota Corolla. It does need to work in the real world. So I'm cruising down the freeway and I want to kind of tell you what's going on here. With the transmission slotted over into sixth gear, uh, we are turning 2600 RPM at 70 miles an hour and the engine is pretty much silent at this point. In fact, the only thing I'm really hearing is a bit of tire noise and just wind noise. Of course, in this car, it's pretty well insulated so it kind of just comes across as white noise and if you turn on the stereo and put it into a 3.0 system it sounds pretty good and kind of drowns everything out i put 374.4 374.2 miles in the car uh the trip computer estimated that i had about 50 miles remaining on the tank uh, and it's indicating here that I've averaged 30.9 mpg over those 374 miles. Um, some rough math dictates that's very conservative. I think we're going to be pretty impressed. Um, this car, the new Corolla XSC hatchback with the 60 manual transmission is rated at 30 mpg city and 38 freeway. I've done a pretty even blend of both, uh, sitting in traffic around town and open road driving. So let's calculate our real world fuel economy. So 374.2 miles divided by, oh, this is going to be good, 10.556 gallons. Real world fuel economy for the first tank on the Corolla, 35.44 mpg. That's pretty solid. Okay, I am sick of sitting in this traffic. Back to the canyons we go. How does the new Corolla XSC hatchback handle? Well, unsurprisingly for a um, compact economy car, this front wheel drive, it does understeer at the limit. Uh, honestly, it's fine. Uh, the nice thing about this 2019 Corolla hatchback versus the IM it replaces is it does have a fully independent rear suspension. It's pretty hooked up around the corners. It's never really gonna surprise you. It's not gonna skate over bumps. And other than the understeer, once you're below the limit, which is really where you are 99% of your life, it's a fun little car. It clings on pretty well and does a pretty good job of being pretty engaging. Although that said, electric power steering, like most cars, is pretty dead. The only real, only real feedback you're getting is from those 18-inch wheels, which have really low, nice low-profile tires. You can feel those kind of folding and flexing. Those tires give you a bit of feedback through the steering system. But in day-to-day -day use, electric power steering is pretty numb and pretty dead. But I guess that's kind of, again, like the clutch, kind of normal for new economy cars these days. A good sign about this car is that the biggest handling limit right now is the tires because they're all season plain Jane Peter tires. It does feel like this chassis, if you bolt up some really sticky tires to it, would do pretty good if that's what you're inclined to go do. So, overall the car handles pretty well, it has a pretty decent little engine, and the 6-speed gearbox is not without its flaws, but it's much better than a CVT, that's for sure. So you've heard me wax poetic about the way this car looks on the outside, obviously I think it's really cool looking, but the inside has been a very pleasant surprise, uh, especially coming from the last Corolla, which was okay in its class, but not good. Uh, this car... They clearly looked at the current Honda Civic and said, wow, we need to step it up. And they did. Uh, look around, there are nice padded materials. This is a real leather wrap dash. 
I love the Toyota Entune screen behind the camera. Uh, my only real notable complaint with the interior uh, is the use of piano black plastics. This is a very common thing these days is to use piano black interior trim. And on certain areas, I think it looks great, but it's not very durable. If you look down here, this trim near the seatbelt receptacle is actually already gouged and scraped up with 3,000 miles on it. The whole finish is actually uh, starting to chunk off right here uh, from people probably hitting the seatbelt buckle up against this. So that's not very good. Beyond that, I was able to find a few people who own the current 10th generation Honda Civic and plop them into this car, and they all came away pretty impressed. They all said this is either at the same level of the Civic, or some of them actually preferred this car a little bit, simply due to the layout. Speaking of the layout, uh, I love the way the interior on this car is laid out. Everything is very simple, everything is very intuitive, and there are actual knobs. Oh, praise B. Obviously, Toyota's Entune system is a touchscreen, but all of your main controls are done with buttons and knobs, as it should be. Buttons and knobs are tactile. A touchscreen really isn't. That means, compared to the upper levels of Honda Civic, where even your radio controls and your AC controls are all via touchscreen, this thing has knobs and buttons, so I can just go down here and adjust my temperature. It's right there. Want to change my temperature? It's right there. Change the volume? It's right there. Similarly, uh, all your cruise control, channel changing, uh, volume, all on the steering wheel here, again, very intuitive, very simple. So the interior materials are very nice, as I've mentioned, like look at the dashboard, it's very pretty, especially compared to the previous car. I also love the seats, uh, this XSC gets really cool two-tone seats, they're like a split leather and hybrid cloth textile thing going on here, really neat, very cool to look at and very comfortable. And they're pretty supportive too in the corners. So this car looks pretty cool, has a pretty fun little powertrain package, handles pretty well, and it's pretty engaging to drive overall. Uh, do I have any qualms with the car? Yes. Uh, I need to clarify this particular car is a pre-production vehicle. This car comes out later this summer, it has a giant placard here that says pre-production vehicle. Uh, that said, this pre-production vehicle is not perfect. Uh, the clutch pedal currently squeaks every time you push it up or down, which is very annoying. And I've started to get an intermittent grinding in fourth gear that does, doesn't seem to have any real reason as for why it's doing that. That's not good. Beyond those issues, the whole time I've had the Corolla under my care, it's been pretty much without issue. I think Toyota has done a very good job with the new Corolla hatchback. You can hear me torturing tires right now. Uh, and that's a good sign. You know, how often do you think of Toyota, Toyota Corolla and like tortured tires and canyon runs? Uh, I'm really glad Toyota is making this car. They're, it's showing they're putting a real effort in to engage with us enthusiasts. Would I buy one? Well, I'm a broke motoring journalist. Obviously, I couldn't afford a brand new car. But that said, I completely understand why this car exists. I think it's a great value for the price. And I would have no hesitation recommending this to viewers, friends, or family. So, that's the new Toyota Corolla hatchback in a nutshell. I'm really pleased with what the brand has done here, both inside and out, for a sporty, fun, everyday compact vehicle. The new Corolla hatch arrives in dealerships by the end of summer. I highly recommend you go test drive one for yourself.